So over the weekend, I built a massive battery backup system that I'm using to charge my Tesla. Um, as you guys know, I had a lot of raw lithium iron phosphate cells, and what you see right here is 30 kilowatt hours. And I wasn't using them, so I thought, hey, why not have a backup system for charging my car? So if my off-grid solar power system were to go down and the grid were to go down, which is very unlikely, obviously, I'll still be able to use this system. Also, this is a great test system for cycling these cells. Um, the first shelf, these are all grade B cells and they're swollen. That's why I have them configured in this way so they're not touching each other. And these ones expand and contract quite greatly. So it will be interesting to see how the capacity fades over time. So every day I'm gonna cycle it to zero and then back up to 100%. And if there is a massive amount of degradation, it will be really cool to show you in like a year or two. Now I like this configuration for grade B cells. They are not touching each other. They can expand and contract and I've had zero issues over the years with it. And this is a 48 volt battery with 16 cells in series. Now the second shelf is grade A brand new cells, but they're all different types of Eve cells. Like these terminals are very close together and these are very far apart. So it was very hard for me to organize it on this shelf. That's why it doesn't look as nice as the other one. Now, some people will criticize how I have this BMS mounted, but it works great. If it ever were to fail, it's not touching anything and it's connected to metal. Also, it has a lot of airflow, so it does look a little bad, but it's very functional. Now, the positive conductors from the batteries are both connected to a T-class fuse. And then we have two odd gauge cables supplying a 6048. And this is the negative cable right here. So all I did to build this system is connect the battery and then connect a 240 volt extension cord with a NEMA 650 to the input. So this is 240 volts for my off-grid solar power system. And then the AC output is connected to a female NEMA 650 and that's connected to my Tesla charger. And then it's connected to my Model Y over here. And I use it to charge my EV every single day. Now something I want to mention is how underrated the LV6048 is. I've made multiple videos on this unit and people don't seem to care and the sales are never that good. The only downside of this unit is that the max PV input voltage is a bit low. It's 150 volts. So you'd have to have a combiner box right here and have multiple parallel strings for your solar array. But this does not have the grounding issues like the LV6548 when they're in a split phase configuration. This one has 240 volts at the output. So you just connect your 240 volt or 120 volt loads and that's it. You don't have to configure anything, no communication, it's very easy. Also putting these into parallel is very easy and you'll still have that 240 volts at whatever capacity you need. Even two of these in parallel would be 12,000 watts and that's pretty good. Now in this configuration, this is a battery backup or an uninterruptible power supply. But if you add a solar array and connect it right here, you have an off-grid solar power system and probably for most people, this is all they need for like a backup system. Also, you don't need to use raw cells. You could easily stack up some server rack batteries like I showed in my past video, run some cables up on top, uh, screw this into the steel bars below and then connect it to a 240 volt source on the input and 240 volt source on the output. You could actually have a 120 volt source at the input and then do level two charging at the output. So this might be a cheap way if you don't have access to a 240 volt supply on your side of the house where you wanna park your EV. So lots of stuff you can do with this. This is pretty cool. You could have it charge all day slowly off of 120 and then just use all the power that you stored at the end. Or if it's at peak times, like if you live in California and electricity is very expensive, you could have one of these only on when electricity is more expensive. So yeah, lots of cool stuff you can do and very simple. Like, I don't think it gets easier than this. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.